Japanese authorities have raised the volcanic alert level for a mountain in Kanagawa Prefecture, west of Tokyo. They say a very small eruption appears to have taken place on Mount Hakone and warned that the volcano could erupt again. Officials with the Meteorological Agency raised the alert level to three on a scale of five and are calling on people not to approach the mountain. The alert level had been at two. Officials say they've confirmed fresh layers of volcanic ash near a newly found vent in the valley. Authorities in Hakone have ordered people within a radius of one kilometer of the mountain to evacuate. There are residences, hotels, and a hot spring resort. Mount Hakone is a caldera volcano. The highest peak has an elevation of about 1,400 meters. Meteorological agency officials say a large volume of steam has been spewing from hot spring facilities at Oakudani Valley since last month. Researchers have recorded numerous earthquakes in the area since late April. They say they observed more than 300 earthquakes on Monday. On Tuesday morning, there were 180 more. Officials believe the last time Mount Hakone erupted was in the 12th or 13th Workers century. Workers at the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant have completed a major undertaking. They've finished removing highly radioactive water from underground tunnels that connect to one of the facility's reactor buildings. Tokyo Electric Power Company officials say workers have removed about 4,500 tons of the water from the tunnels linked to the number two reactor building. The space under the building is filled with highly contaminated water that came into contact with melted nuclear fuel. There were concerns that the water could flow out to sea through the tunnels. Since November, workers have been filling in the tunnels with cement to remove the water. TEPCO officials say they hope to finish similar work at underground tunnels that connect to the plant's number three reactor in July. They estimate that more than 10,000 tons of the water has flowed into tunnels beneath both reactors. accident at Fukushima Daiichi spread radioactive contamination over land stretching for dozens of kilometers. More than three and a half years later, authorities still classify many affected areas as evacuation zones, and they've designated one particular area a no-entry zone. The radiation level is so high, people who once lived there face the prospect of never returning home. NHK World's Ryo Asami joined one evacuee who went back for a look. Akinori Shibata and his family once lived in Namie, a rural municipality not far from Fukushima Daiichi. The nuclear accident forced them to evacuate some 30 kilometers west to the city of Nihonmatsu, where they now live. Shibata made a tough decision earlier this year. He gave up on the idea of returning to Namie and decided to start a new life. This is my second hometown now. Over there is my real home, but we can't even enter that area. Still, Shibata is eager to follow the situation in Namie. So he's applied to enter the restricted zone with some radiation experts from Niigata University, led by Professor Makoto Naito. Since the nuclear accident, the group has been involved in regular surveys in Namie. They allowed me to follow them into the restricted area. 
We are right in front of the no entry zone around Fukushima Daiichi. Access beyond this point is restricted. We need this two day permit to get in. According to Naito's research, average radiation levels went down in the no entry zone. But they remain high in some areas. Then we accompanied Shibata to his home. It's been about six months since he last visited. The house has become moldy and full of cobwebs. It's clear the family had to pack in a rush. The hands of this clock are frozen at the exact time the disaster struck. Shibata finds some belongings that have a special meaning for the family, his children's school diplomas. My kids worked hard to get these, so I'd really like to take them back with me. But they're contaminated, so I can't. The researchers take some measurements around the house. The experts explain to Shibata that radiation is still too high for people to move back. Radiation levels are very high in this area. I think making a quick decision was the right thing to do. I want my aging parents to enjoy the rest of their lives, and my children still have a future. That's why I want to give them a normal life in a normal house. Many evacuees like the Shibatas are weighing a similar decision. They are torn between the hope of going back one day and giving up entirely to make a clean start. Ryo Asami, NHK World, Namie, Fukushima. The smartphone game is gaining fans worldwide. Players compete by traveling to key locations and interacting with local sites. Now, in Japan, groups attempting to revive their communities and some companies are trying to attract players. NHK World's Chie Tanaka reports. An event was held in the northeastern city of Sendai this month. 4,000 players gathered, they're from all over Japan, as well as Taiwan, the U.S. and other parts of the world. The players spread out across the city with their smartphones. The game called Ingress was developed by a Google in-house venture. It uses the smartphone's GPS function. Players form two teams and try to take over each other's territory. Landmarks and monuments throughout the city are identified as portals. Players must get close to the portals in order to capture them. They can enlarge their territory by capturing three portals. The charm of this game is that it gets you out in the world. It introduces you to new places and new people. Since the game encourages people to actually go to real places, some companies view it as a marketing opportunity. In collaboration with the game maker, a major convenience store chain made almost all of its Japanese stores into polos last November. The company tracks how many players approaches portals, and the number of such interactions is up to five times higher than originally forecast. I've heard that many players have started shopping at our stores. We're planning to offer products that will bring even more of them in. The town of Onagawa is also getting on board. It was devastated by the 2011 earthquake and tsunami. 
many buildings were washed away, the population has dropped by 30 percent since then. People involved in the area's revitalization are hoping the game will attract new visitors. <laughs> this event drew hundreds of players. <laughs> Organizers have set up portals where players can observe the effects of the disaster as they explore the town. 16 meters above sea level, this stone monument documents how high the tsunami reached. It's also one of the portals. I realized just how far up a tsunami can go. It's scary to think that the area I walked around just now was all underwater. The players also get a chance to see how the town is being rebuilt. This shop served them special fish cake, stamped with the game's symbol. <laughs> this hot spring reopened just this year. It too has become a portal and players can stop by for a soak. I'm sure the town will be very attractive once it's rebuilt. I'm very happy that lots of people have seen the town as it is now and have become interested in its future. The game encourages players to travel to new destinations and people in the places they visit are hoping they too will be winners. Chei Tanaka, NHK World. Ishinomaki City in northeast Japan held a running event over the weekend. Residents wanted to thank people for their support and to demonstrate how the city is rebuilding after the 2011 earthquake and tsunami. An Olympic cauldron built for the 1964 Tokyo Games was ignited before the event. It's on loan to Ishinomaki as a symbol of reconstruction. About 2,800 runners from across the country took part in a half marathon and a 10-kilometer race. Local people cheered the participants as rain fell. The runners passed near temporary housing units where many people are still living. I ran with the hope that Ishinomaki and the region will cheer up. I saw residents cheering us, but actually we should be cheering them. It was so moving that it energized me from the starting line. After the race, the runners enjoyed scallops and other local delicacies. Japanese food manufacturers are looking at innovative ways to ensure the safety of their products. They're responding to a series of consumer complaints in which foreign objects have been found in food. One company has resumed the sales of instant noodles after the popular brand was taken off shelves. This is my favorite. I waited a very long time for this day. Maruka Foods stopped selling its Peyang fried noodles after a customer found an insect in the product in December. Company officials say they will do all they can to ensure food safety. Technologies designed to detect foreign objects inside food products are drawing attention at the International Food Machinery and Technology Exhibition. This equipment will automatically remove a product from the production line if it detects a foreign object. Another machine has X-ray images and multiple sensors that allow a scan to quickly and accurately detect unwanted materials. Our new system can detect a foreign object in the earliest stages of production. Some workers have brought foreign objects into the workplace. To prevent this, an electronic ID is embedded in the arm of this uniform. If the worker is cleared for security, the door will open. It's important how we can prevent workers from bringing a foreign object into the production line. This system obliges them to enter workrooms empty-handed. About 680 companies are taking part in the four-day exhibition.